Okay, so our job in this problem is to convert each of these to decimals and graph them on the number line and identify which are rational or irrational. Let's start by identifying the irrational numbers. I'm going to circle them. The square root of 2, pi, and the square root of 10. The idea is if, if you take the square root of um, a whole number, like 2, and you find that the root is between numbers, some kind of decimal, it's automatically irrational. All right, so it's assuming you're starting with the whole number. Um, so for example, the square root of 2, it's between 1 and 2, right? Because 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 2. Um, so, so that means that it's irrational. This only applies when you're starting with the square root of a whole number. Every other number here is rational, right? Um, 1 and a half, negative 0.7, any terminating decimal like 0.7, any simple fraction is automatically rational. So we want to convert each of these to decimals so that we can graph them on the number line. Some of them already are. And let's start with those simple ones, like negative 0.7. Well, here's negative 1, right? Just be careful not to put negative 0.7 on the left side over here, because that is more like negative 1.25. Notice as we go further down the number line here, we get further and further from 0. So negative 0.7 should be about here. And that's the first one we'll mark, right? Put a dot there. So that, that one's done. Next, let's start with another simple one. Negative 1.4. 1, uh, 1 over 4, excuse me. That's negative 1 fourth or negative, right down here, negative 0.25, right? So here, that'll be about here. Negative 0.25. And now we're getting somewhere. This one's done. I'm going to take 1 and 1 half next. That's just 1.5. And if you're stuck on how to convert that to a decimal, just remember this means 1 plus 1 half or 1 plus 1 half. So I can think of that as 2 over 2 plus 1 half. 2 over 2 is 1. That gives me 3 halves. To make this a decimal, I would then take 3 and divide it by 2. 2 goes into 3 once, right, with half left over. There's different ways of looking at it. Of course, I didn't really change much there. I'm just playing around with it to rewrite it uh, as an improper fraction, and then to turn that into a decimal and divide numerator by denominator. So that one's done. We just kind of plot it over here, 1.5, okay? Um, next we have 5 over 3, and to convert that we just do 5 divided by 3. So 3 goes into 5 once, with a remainder of 2 out of 3. It's funny how many 3's go into it. 2 thirds, if we take 2 and divide it by 3, right, or we can write this as an improper fraction. Uh, if I had 1 plus 2 thirds, that's, that's 5 over thirds again. I guess I'm going backwards. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, 2 over 3 uh, is 0.6 repeating. So this would be 1.6 repeating, which is a little bit above 1.5. Let's say right there. And now we're getting somewhere. A few more to go. The square of 2 isn't so bad to plot um, on the number line, but it's a little tricky right, to, to write as a, as a decimal. Um, and if they don't tell you how far um, you have to go to round a decimal, make your life as easy as possible. Here, um, in this problem, they didn't happen to say it. They, the goal is to turn it to some kind of decimal and then plot that. I know it's between 1 and 2. Again, because 1 squared is, is 1 and 2 squared is 4. And 2 is between 1 and 4. So the square root of 2 is about um, 1.4, let's say. I can plot that right here. So that's the square root of 2. Now let's say you have a calculator. Every calculator has a square root. The scientific calculators have square root functions on them. Now, if you're not sure to use the square root function, here's what you might do. You know that the square root of 2 is between 1 and 2, so test the number out, like 1.5. Multiply it by itself and see if you go over 2, and we do. That means that the square root of 2 is below 1.5. So we try 1.4, right, times 1.4 to test that one out. That's 1.96, that's below the square root of 2. And that tells us, right, so if we forget how to use the square root function, 1.4 squared Right, is, is too small. That was 1.96. 1.5 squared is 2.25. You can approximate even further where the decimal is of the square root of 2 by saying it's between 1.4 and 1.5 if you had to. And you can keep going further and further with this approximation. Try something like 1.41 and 1.49. See if it's between those two. And that'll help you get a good approximation. They don't tell us how far to round pi, so I'm just going to pick 3.14. Um, 
and that might that might be enough. Although the challenge is, of course, the square root of ten. So let's try the square root of ten first. Uh, I know we'll put pi three point one four one five nine two six. This is a part two question, uh, which means that you'll have a calculator handy, which will tell you the value of pi up to ten places. Um, but anyway, we have that to help. So the square root of ten is between three and four, right? Because three squared is nine, four squared is sixteen, and ten is between nine and sixteen. But but again, we need we need an approximation that's better, right? Between three and four, because pi and square root of ten can't be at the same location. They're at different spots. So let's use our calculator approach. And again, with the square root of ten on a calculator, you can pump that out really quickly. But assuming you're forgetting that, um, what I would do is take three, let's say point one times, well, you know what, let's go halfway, 3.5 times 3.5, and we get 12.25. So 3.5 is too large. Let's try 3.2 times 3.2. That's also too large. So we want to go a little bit lower, 3.1 times 3.1. So it's above 3.1, so that's a good start. But so is pi, so we have to go further. So I want to know, is it above 3.14 or below? Right, that'll help me approximate this even better. So 3.14 times 3.14. That is still too small. So keep going. 3.14 is too small. Now I want to know, okay, it's equal to pi to this point. What about 3.1415? Is it above or below that? Right? I'm comparing it to pi here. 3.1415 times 3.1415. It's still too small, so it's above this right here. So if I take, let's just try this, 3.1415926 times 3.1415926, what I get is still too small. This tells me basically that the square root of 10 is above pi. Right? Let's say pi is like about here. Well, the square root of 10 is about, let's say, let's try 3.15 times 3.15. Well, that would have been quicker. I should have done that. 3.15 squared is still too small. So the square root of 10 is above 3.15. I don't know why I ended up beginning with this. Sorry. So maybe it's about here. And you can estimate that and show that it's above pi by doing that calculation, by showing that 3.15 squared right, is less than 10, which means that the it's not big enough, but it's close. So the square root of 10 is above this number right here. And you could avoid all this, by the way. Um, by, by just pressing in the right key sequence on your calculator. You can get even closer, I think. Let's see, 3.16 times 3.16. Still too small, 3.2. I think we tried 3.2 before. Too large. So it's between 3.16 and 3.2. Certainly larger than pi. All right, well, I hope this helped. Thanks.